What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. We got a good one for you today. Best Stelling, who has an incredible special right now on HBO Max called Girl Daddy. You got to go see this. Go check it out. If you uh, don't have HBO, get it, okay? Um, I am on a tour. Dude, we're about to announce so many dates. Um, but right now, go to andrewsantino.com, and you can see I'm going to Houston in a couple of weeks. I go to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. I go to Nashville. I go to Calusa, which is uh, just north of Sacramento. I go to Boston. Uh, Denver is up there. Denver, baby. Denver, Colorado, one of my favorite places on earth. Also, we're adding, we're going to be adding uh, Philly. We're going to be adding, um, I think, Grand Rapids. I think Indianapolis. I think uh, Columbus. I think uh, somewhere in Florida. I'm going on the list. Anyway, we're adding. And also, we're going to be doing New Year's Eve, I think, in Phoenix. Those aren't up yet, but just be prepped. AndrewSantino.com. Keep checking out for the tickets, uh, but sign up right now. Go get that stuff. The Patreon is patreon.com slash Whiskey Ginger Podcast. That's where I do the solo episodes, and I also do a Zoom with the top tier, which is so much fun. And uh, if you're looking for merch, it's in the merch bar down below. Like it, subscribe it, tell a friend, send a comment out to the world so the Whiskey Ginger love keeps spreading. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. <laughs> a very old, dear friend of mine, Beth Stelling. Beth, cheers. 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 Look me in the eye. You have to look me in the eye. Sorry that's an old that. Irish. Are we supposed to tap down? Yeah. Well, that's not, that's an American thing. Oh. But then I, but the Irish have to, you know why they do that? Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go. Don't leave. Do you know why people do that for real? <laughs> why? Oh, there's two things. I've heard this may be, these may be one of those old folktale things, but I don't care if it's fake. Um, you used to clink glasses because if somebody poisoned your drink, some of yours would spill into theirs and some of theirs would spill into yours. Ooh. If that's fake, I don't care. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. so fun. Because you imagine an old pub, they'd clink those like wooden, like big gulp things and they'd smash them together. <laughs> and they would spill everywhere. Like bars used to be like f just booze everywhere. And then the eyes thing is another tell. If someone clicks and looks away, it's because they don't like you or they're plotting to kill you kill or you. hurt you. Put something in your drink. Did you look at you went down? You I lowered. went down a little. Why is that? I don't know. I felt too high up there. Did you? Yeah, I felt like I was taller than you. You're not. I'm okay. six foot one. I'm six foot one. No, you're and not. A half. No, you're not. I'm you're five nine. Five nine. <laughs> you're tall, but you're not that tall. Don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't. <laughs> you're not a six footer, dude. When I went to Ireland, which you've been. A rude assumption, but you're right. Okay. <laughs> a racist assumption, but you're totally right. I've been a few times, yeah. Okay, I've only been to Kilkenny for the festival, the Cat Laughs Festival. Oh, yeah. Which I bomb at every year. Lie. And it's annoying to hear that you, st that you say you bomb because I know you don't. That's an annoying. <laughs> don't do that anymore on this podcast. <laughs> okay, okay. Just say you didn't do as well I'm as you there, wanted I'm to. Killing. Okay, you're crushing. And, but I drank a ton of Guinness while I was there. I felt healthier. Did you like Guinness? I felt like it cleared up my face. It did not. <laughs> There's no chance. I really do like Guinness. But it's good. Actually, if you put it on your face, it's no. good for you. Beer facials are good. I have never heard. That's. I swear to God, we, we can, we're going to Google beer facials right now. Well, I'm telling you, the Guinness made me feel healthier. Um, is there such thing as beer facials? Sometimes I ask Google stuff just to see. Beer facials. While we've heard of using beer to make our hair shinier, beer as a skincare ingredient is very new. Carolyn Doe, spa director at the Umsteads Hotel and Spa, <gasps> says beer. In North Carolina? Yep. is an idea because yeast in beer works to balance the pH of your skin, targets bacteria, and, and uh, helps to reduce breakouts. Start putting beer on your face, baby. Spit it out. I felt so, like I shouldn't crunch anymore. You can crunch on this show. This is called Crunching with Beth. <laughs> whiskey ginger whiskey ginger, ginger crunching with beth crunching with beth beth um let's give some yeah. context for people that don't yeah. know you if you don't know yeah. beth she is an incredible comedian a great writer a great uh person i've known you for i would like to say at a decade yeah i was gonna say at least at least a decade yeah it's gotta be but 10 years is always the breaking the point the time we met though because like we both weren't we not on the same comedy central half hour season yeah but we knew each other before half yeah. hours yeah the half hours were in Boston in 2015, 15. but I met you probably a couple years before that. And my my guess, I'm going to give a slick guess, is at like 
and El Cid or mm. or or um what else was over there? What else was another show that was like like on yeah. Sunset or oh, oh. Los Feliz or Echoes of Echoes of Sunset, Sunset, maybe. That could have been over there. Echoplex. Best Fish Taco. Has that yeah, been going on long enough? It. I don't even know. Been around a long time. But that's the problem with um that's really the problem to me with shows and, and comedy timeline. I was talking to Pete Holmes yeah. about this. I don't remember. After a certain uh, ten years. I yeah, can't. I know. I'm trying to think. There's certain people, like when I first got out here, I remember meeting in How and Why. Mm. But it's just so few. Yeah, well, it like gets Kate harder. Berlant, How did you Jake meet Kate? Jake Weissman. Through I, Jake Weissman. I remember meeting at, Jake. Excuse me. Holy fuck. I yes. Think, that's where I met him. Downtown Independent. I, re- I met Jake, and I knew Dave from something else. That's it. Anyway, that let used me, to be such a fun Let show. me do my bio for okay. you. Okay. Okay? Beth is an incredible writer, a great stand-up comedian, a great person. Um... She has a special, by the way, I'm, I'm doing a plug even though I don't want it to feel like a plug, but it is. She has a very amazing special out right now. Well, you that you have a special out now, but you already have had specials, okay? Don't don't make it seem like but she's never had a special before. This is my first hour. Yeah. I had half hours out there. But you have half hours. But don't you think that's just as valid? I don't understand why that doesn't get enough it's love. It's changed over time for sure. Yeah. Like but there's pe- a prestige with the hour. There is. That existed for so long and mm. has been dashed by Netflix. But what do you? Th- what's your opinion about it? Do you, do you think it doesn't think matter? I do think it matters. I, I still think that there is a prestige with it. However, uh, it's been ruined by Netflix. But do you value your half hours as much as your hour? I do. See, that's why. I take why. them just as seriously. Because they're great. But a special should be special. Uh, it shouldn't be an extended podcast. Yeah. This is a special, by the way. <laughs> Netflix is buying oh, these. Oh, no. The rumor is they're buying podcasts. No. I swear to God. That's kind of smart. I mean, they're I just going to buy us. They want. They're going to buy us. They're going to put a bid on you and your house and your car. <laughs> and, and you're going to have to drive around Netflix-sponsored fucking cars. Oh my By the God. way, I know that sounds – it's going to be real. Do you, you know how basketball players for years, the NBA, fought to have advertisements on their jerseys? They refused. Really? NBA you, said no. No, but they did – they have them now. But for years they said no, right? Baseball still doesn't have them. Yeah. But the NASCAR's N- got a lot of them. Well, that's all those people that's are is they're really. big advertisements. But I do think that's coming for comedy. Because you know how sometimes it's a show sponsored by... Well, especially at, like, Jam in the Van. Sure. Behind us, it's, like, Stone Road. Right, but I think at some point paid. they're going to pay you to wear shirts on stage. But some comics already... I feel like maybe really? the skater comics were already... Maybe that's because they were sponsored before. Like, like who, Chris like, Fairbanks. Does he do that? Is well, it? I'm not saying that he does that, but oh. I just feel like... <laughs> he just came to mind, where I was like, I yeah. feel like he would be sent something cool to wear on stage. See, but that seems like the cool version of it. I'm You're talking right. about, like, the... You're right. Like icy hot. Like I have to wear an icy hot sweater <laughs> <laughs> on, my, on my during my set. No, like Whitmer Thomas or those guys that do cool shit. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool if like right, right. they're sponsored by a dope skate brand. Yours is going to be girl. icy hot? Yeah, icy hot. I want icy hot. <laughs> I use it every day. Mine's going to be O's by Quaker. Ooh. Have you ever had that cereal? Love O's. So good. Dude, I actually like healthier, he- healthy-ish cereals yeah. more than I like the... Now. Sugary one. No, even as a kid. Ooh. I didn't love sugary cereals. What were your cereals as a kid? Uh, this is an easy setup for a joke here. You know what I mean? Shredded wheat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> box of iron. Did you ever have box of iron? <laughs> you just chewed on iron for an hour and a half. What was my favorite cereal as a kid? It was always like, I liked, um, I, I truly, Rice Krispies. It wasn't sugary. Yeah. I like stuff that was like. My cousins would sprinkle sugar on top of Rice Krispies. And I remember seeing it when we visited my aunts and I was like, uh, we need that. My mom yeah. was like, absolutely not. That's Midwest shit. <laughs> You're an Ohio kid. Yeah. That's such a, Midwest kids did really like, um, <laughs> that was like Midwest trashy cool stuff was like pouring sugar on cereal, <laughs> sneaking in snacks into the movie theater. That's Midwest oh, shit. Really? Yeah. Do you never do that? Of course I did that, but yeah. I didn't know it was. That's our thing, Beth. That's the Midwest <laughs> kids. Claim it I don't think they do that anywhere else. I think I mentioned it. I still it. do it. Yeah, of course. What do you I've mean? Taken, what's the weirdest thing you've taken in? Into a movie theater? Mm-hmm. It's not weird, but I, me and this girl Sarah in college snuck in 40s oh, yeah, in a bag, good. and that was fun. It was just, it was absurd to have a 40 yeah. in a movie theater because it's so cumbersome. Yeah, it is huge. It's not a cool thing at- to drink. It's just too big, and it gets hot by the bottom. Yeah, by the end, it's just warm. But, but we snuck in to watch, um, maybe it was Kill Bill? I don't know which volume. I, what was volume? I think we just... And then we, we drank 40s and watched Kill Bill in the movie theater, which, by the way, highly recommend if it ever comes back. I don't know if I've ever seen Kill Bill. Are you serious? None of them? I don't think so, no. Sh- for shame, dude. That's, I gotta watch makes them. Me, that makes me mad, kind of. I've Wait. taken a Chipotle burrito in. That's that's the weirdest thing? I mean, I don't know about weird, but, but you know, it was a full big, meal. That's big. Yeah, it is like you're really tearing Was it off. steak or chicken? 
chicken. It got to be chicken. <laughs> got to be chicken. I can't believe people eat steak from there. They've really gone downhill, though. They're gross. Yeah. Yeah. They're gross. This episode is sponsored by Chipotle and McDonald's family. They used to own them. McDonald's, and they, they bought them, they sold them, they bought them. Chipotle, to me, is a little... It was a thing that we could do before we moved here. How about that? Yeah. You can't do that now. No. When an adult <laughs> tells me they're going to go to Chipotle, I get a little upset. <laughs> I'm crying. Good. They're gross. They're gross. It used to be good. Many, many, many years First ago. First trip there, I hated it. I remember really? my high school boyfriend, Robert, loved Chipotle. Robert, Robert. Palermo. Oh, does he ever. Yeah. Everybody knows our palm. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. But now, then I turned a corner. You did? You shifted? Yeah, I went chicken, black beans, pico de gallo. Cheese? Cheese. Sour, sour cream? cream? Lettuce. Maybe a little hot. Oh, uh, me, oh, the hot. I went back. I, I was a little hot. Everybody goes to hot, and then they go, just give me the medium. That the hot was too much. <laughs> it's insane. A little bit of hot. Just a little hot. <laughs> and, they, and they put that fucking ladle. Yeah. You're like, what is that? How mu- that's, that, that, that's literally like a cup, a full it's cup so of much. hot sauce. I don't need it. But honestly, Chipotle, for people in Southern California, it's a shame whenever I see people. I, you could go to a taco stand in a gas station, which is near my house, and get t- Real uh, three tacos, tacos for— I think she's five bucks for three tacos. That sounds expensive. Yeah. I have a huge crush on her. Really? I do. She knows it. <laughs> yeah, I flirt with her every time. She's got. She's like 60. Is she wearing a ring? Or- she's oh, in her okay. late 60s. She knows I'm not available either, but it's like a thing she we have fit? going on. Huh? She fit? You know, I'm not about that, Beth, okay? Mm. I don't care what she looks I like. I'm not sure like, how she's no, doing No, don't for do her that age. to me. She's, um... <laughs> Guess her weight. 286. Guess my weight. <laughs> 226. Uh, no, she's um, she's in she's in good shape for a woman of her age. I think yeah. that's a nice way to say it. I think so, too. She's also her face, her skin. Beautiful. Man, brown people just have better skin than us. Yeah, I mean, I've, whew. They my, just have over better the years, skin. I've had so many acne troubles. Talk to me, kid. I had Accutane twice, you know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, I never I, did it because I was so scared. Because they're basically like, if you get pregnant on Accutane, your baby will be like a tooth wrapped in hair. <laughs> The image is wonderful. I just see a big molar just with tons of hair strewn around it, and its eyeballs are all crooked. I'm a baby. You're like, oh, my God, that molar baby. You're already scared to have sex as a teenager. Like, the right. last thing you need is to well, sign S- documentation. S- STD scares in health class. Then, plus, they're like, we're going to put you on face medicine to make you um, think you you'll— want to kill yourself. You'll kill yourself. Maybe die from this. And your face will and, be on your pillow. Yeah. It will come from your face and then yeah. stick to your pillow. Stick to your— I did it once, and then the second time I was about to start it, and then um, the doctor uh, pulled it away and was like, we don't know if it's safe to do back-to-back like that. And I know a bunch of other kids that did. My friend wow. Sean did it twice back-to-back. And um, he's doing really well right now, to be honest with you. And so I, maybe I should have done it back-to-back. He's got a, two beautiful children. He lives in Wisconsin. So they're fine. I guess the kids they're, are fine. The kids I opened are fine. My, this last special on, on acne material. Really? Yes, because it's been such a thing. Yeah. I, I could I had, say I love I, my acne. It keeps me young. <laughs> I'm gonna do bits about it. That's really funny. Thank you. I do. Well, I look. I, there was an ad. I have an adoration for um, for that time in my life because uh, the troubles made me probably funnier or stronger. Yeah, but you also can remember the time where I mean, I remember being in Chicago and seeing a girl from high school at Urban Outfitters, which I have such a love hate relationship with. Why do I go in there? Still today? Well, I don't go in there anymore. Beth, let's there go. Were year- <laughs> can we go today? Yes. Let's go to Urban. Okay. Let's go buy an Obey shirt. <laughs> Some vans and uh, what else? They have candles. They have such random I was bullshit say, there. I like, got uh, um, fuck. I can't remember the name of it. Damn. No, give it to me. Wait I'm for it. I'm thinking of the album. Oh, it's the got album. the waves on it. God, Wait, it would have been so good if I thought. You know, when you have like, if you just said the joke. Can we can we can edit it out? We'll cut it. We'll go right back to it and pretend it never <laughs> happened. <laughs> Wait, what it's waves? Not Sonic U. We're gonna get there. Is it like Joy Division? Whew, got it. That's how I come. <laughs> Joy Division. <laughs> okay, we'll go to it. And he's like, "What? What happened?" What was that? And you're like, "I'm done. I'm good." Are I you? had, I had my Joy Division. That's all I need. What you didn't finish either? Him. That's what I would say to him. That's what he would. That's what you'd say to him. I ran into a friend and I had acne at the time, no makeup on. It was just like I wanted to hide. Mm. And it's so weird because obviously it's all you. It, yeah. It's more on you. Someone's looking, you know. From the outside. Did you have braces when you had acne? Never have had braces. Uh, really? Uh-uh. So, I guess. Mm. Look at those things, though. But I also learned how to smile. by. I used to smile like this. Like, as a kid, I would smile like oh. like full. You'd see it all. And then mm. I quickly learned that you should 
You don't want to give that to the camera? Give that smile to the camera, the kid smile. Come on, do it for fun. <laughs> okay. So, uh, there it is. <laughs> That's a cute kid smile. I used to smile like this when I was a kid. My teeth wouldn't touch. <laughs> I always thought it was cool to... Yeah, I, I wanted to be in a movie. <laughs> I, just, yeah, hi. I thought I was Jim Carrey, so I... Oh, my God, I did, too. We, that, that must have just been, like... That's how I got my laughs was Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. For sure. Because we're, we're the Robin same Williams, age, right? Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire. <sighs> I would just quote those movies. Hello, dear. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, who's going to run by fruiting? That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> he was so good. Where is Robin? What are happened to that guy? He actually guy? passed away. He did. Yeah. How'd he do it? Disappeared. He disappeared. Into a role. Amelia Earhart did it. Yeah. Into yeah. a role, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it'd actually still be out there. Wow. Well, Daniel Day-Lewis, you ain't got shit on Rob. <laughs> you know what meant a lot to me? Yeah. After my Netflix half hour, because I was so obsessed with Robin, his daughter Zelda reached out to me. What? She's just like, I really enjoyed your special. I was like, I hate to be a douche. Because I'm the person who like, like I'll see a famous person and be like, I'll be over here. I'm not going to bother you. Mm. But I was like, I got, I'm, I maybe it's cheesy, I said, but I just got to tell you, like, I love Jim Carrey. What did she say? She was like, he would have loved it. She just uh -huh. said something very sweet. That's very nice. He um, he called me a tool one time at the comedy <laughs> no, store. No, I'm didn't. kidding. I'm just no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but he was at the comedy store hanging out one night and uh, working through some very dark stuff. Really? Yeah, it was well, kind of fun when to he watch. Was diagnosed or? Mm, yeah, I mean, he kind of started to come back six years ago or something like that. It was seven years ago, and then I remember watching him work through that stuff. And uh, and was he saying I've Willie body? Mentioned he said he no. He was just talking about divorce oh. pretty heavily. And how um, love is kind of a sham. It is. Yeah. But, I mean, when it, you hear it in a comedy That's club. It's so upsetting. It's I don't hard. know. God, I don't, like, it's is difficult. Love, is love a sham? The way I see it, it's like at adolescence, we're poured a glass of wine. And it's like, hmm. have fun. Hop on this roller coaster of life and love. And you're, it's just like. Oh, this is spilling on and this you're ride. Like, you're spilling. And at the end of the ride, you just have, like, one sip left. And you're like. This is for me, I think. <laughs> That's a really good... I get that. It's never it's never as good as, like, the first time. But yeah. I've also always never been sure. And I'm sure it's because of how I was raised or what happened with my parents. But I've always never been sure. It's yeah. like I've been madly in love, but there's always this little thing in the back of my head that's like, but is it the right person, the right one? I feel like a dog, you know, on a carpet that's like... Yeah. But the carpet's never going to move. Yeah, it's just carpet, pup. What are you doing, but bud? There's no bed's going to form out of the carpet. But who but who could say that and but a bigger like, being? <sighs> we don't know that though. That's you're us. You're yeah. just doing it until you feel like you're tired yeah. and you go, "Fine, this fucking yeah. person's fine." I know that's a sad way to look at it because like, look, I also I think like the more positive way to look at it perhaps is it's a choice. Marriage is a choice. Yeah. And you keep choosing that person, you choose them every day, and that's that. Yeah. And then you made it even more severe by Putting a ring. Jewelry. Like yeah. Jewelry and signing some stuff. Which, by the way, that's why I don't like the ring stuff. because it's like no, no, it's 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 like... Um, it's almost... I used to have an old bit when I was 22 about like... I don't know why, but I was like, I gravitate towards wedding rings at a bar. Because it's like, oh, you know how to commit. Right. It's like an old... Prob no, but that's... Probably a, like an open mic joke still. Yeah. Um, but that was an early joke of mine where it's like, you look for a ring because... Committal. Yeah. But also, I just... The, the jewelry... Uh, even weddings in general are so yucky... Um, because I'm just like, this is all for profit. This wasn't about love. It never was. Yeah. I know I, I sound like this. No, no, no. You know. I was listening, and I think I was listening to, yeah, Sarah's podcast, and someone called in and was kind of just talking about this. Like, you know, and she, she her entry into the question was feminist-based. Like, you know, why would my friends who I thought were feminists, like, want to do this? Which is an interesting take, right? Because, mm. you know, feminism agree. already has a bad <laughs> rap these days when really it's just... They need a new PR campaign. Yeah. <laughs> they really need to re Because, of course, I'm a feminist, and pretty much... But, Everyone but, should be. I but mean, the idea, what does it mean anymore, though? When here it's said, so different, though. Right. Um, if somebody said, I, are you a feminist? Yes. I wouldn't even know how to answer it, though, because I would say, what, is, what do you mean? Well, I, what, he, I guess yeah. what's the intention by the question? Do right. I believe in everything that all, every feminist rhetoric I've heard? That's impossible. So it's weird to say, like, are you a part of a group that has no real um, grouping? It's like, I don't, what? I think it's like... <sighs> For a while there, it was a red flag to me when a woman would say, like, oh, I'm not a feminist. And it's like, gal. Well, that's just. <laughs> all it really is is just saying, like, equal opportunity. Yeah. I think they're saying that to say, just to be. Um, but we're in such a different place than what people before us had to even fight for. Sure. 
Sure, but I mean, I think women who say that, Bless excuse me, you. I think women who say that are doing that just to be, um, um, what's the word? Because yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm dumb right now. They're just trying know to be, you, you know, anti-authoritative, but like that, what, anti-system. What they, wait, isn't there a new term for the... What is it? Get em girl? Got em girl? What's get em girl? Wait, damn it. I'm a bad feminist. You are. <laughs> no. God. Got em girl? There's some term for girls who are like, I'm with the boys. Uh, oh, really? I like sports. Uh, get, <laughs> go get em girls? What is this? I like sports. We're going to isolate that clip right and in. put it on. Yeah. Please let us know. If you um, could send us a letter. Send it to your senator. There's a term for a girl that's just like... I don't know. I, like Trying to be one of well, the boys. Tomboy yes. was when we were but I kids. always felt that. Like as a kid, I definitely felt that. And I will I will say too, the career I've chosen, the life I've chosen, that still resonates with me in a lot of ways. Uh. I don't look at it like, haha, I'm just one of you, one of the guys. Like, but I if we are on a spectrum, I would lean more towards, I guess, my counterpart male's behavior. Yeah, but I don't think well, okay, let's just say that we're both comedians, and so we're that. Yes. I don't think it's one of the guys. I think you're just one of us. And one there of us means... It. That might be it. One of us. Just, all us. comics are one. Join us. Why don't you? Even the ones that you don't like are still part of your world, whether you like it or not. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they're yours. Gosh, I've just found so many people online where I'm like, oh, this is a comedian I've never heard of. Yeah. But they're yeah, but, doing it. Yeah, well... And then in some ways that will also make me feel really lucky that I even like have gotten to have specials. That you're successful. Yeah, I mean, I worked very hard, and I feel like I'm not at all. And this is a lie about Beth. I've never seen her work hard once. (laughs) I've never seen her do any sort of um, uh, research or 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 just putting her back into something. Uh, She really just bails, and she's been paying a team of writers her whole career. (laughs) That was so interesting. Somebody commented um, on my page about like I just posted an abortion joke for my special, and Mm -hmm. someone said like this guy, a a more famous comic, has the best abortion joke or something. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, I love his writers and I follow them instead. <laughs> you don't want to say it. Is. Okay. Well, you I'll guys can look it up. It's on, it's on her Twitter somewhere. <laughs> you can find it. No, but that's what's funny. You know what would be really funny if you it had... It used to be such a funny question when people are like, do you have writers? And you're like, what? Well, it's almost, um, I almost want to be like, where'd you, hear, where'd you hear? It's like when a dad hears a kid cussing, you go, where'd you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? I, I interrupted you. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, I was, uh, no, I was going to say, and this show, whole show should be called Interrupting, trust me, because I do it too much. The fans are like, shut up. No. Um, I, I was going to say, it, it'd be wild to think, and this is real, that like a writer on a TV show would also have writers off the show helping them bring material to the show. <laughs> I mean. That's a real thing. Yeah, SNL, Because I know someone right? that did it. I feel like SNL you know, They were writing on a TV years. sitcom and they were right, Outsourcing? Paying, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have enough money. I'll tell you off camera. Game, please it's do. such a weird thing to do, though. I was like, what? Then you're not good. Yeah, no, you're not. You don't have anything to bring to the table? That's wild. Even if your ideas suck, bring them. A valid question that I've been asked by, you know, um, younger comics is like, oh, are you worried about giving away your own material if I'm writing on a TV show? Yeah. Valid question, and I think I worried about it when I was younger, but no. No. It's not yours it's not for you well it's, and, and also it's gone yeah it already existed it's gone it's it's over when it's over it's almost like when ron funches and i both had a similar joke and then i've had that happen with other comics too yeah and and, and we both talked about it we both laughed about it but it's like it already it's it's already gone the whole thing of it is gone yeah so who cares i don't know it's almost like you can't hold on to that i used to be so worried about it i just think it might be a naivete thing like early years i'm not going to post this five mm. minute set from the Lakeshore Theater in Chicago, because what if somebody bigger steals it? It's like, oh, oh you think they that. care? <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants your wet and wild joke. You think they care about that? That's You're a bad. bad. That's a bad Hyundai joke. <laughs> nobody cares about that joke. That's a bad joke. Okay, That's by the way, give me, give me one of your oldest, worst jokes. Bad, old, bad. Okay. Or, or even you know after all this time that you're like, I knew it was bad then, but I was doing oh, it. Oh, my. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Like bad for women? Okay. Bad just in ge- that you know it I sucks. I think it's a compliment when you get roofied. It means somebody wants to sleep with you. And then you'd have a good story to tell your kids. You could say like, uh, your dad and I met in a very um, non-traditional way. <laughs> <laughs> I was unconscious. But when I woke up, he was still there. And it was love at first sight. Because it had to be. Beth, why is that bad? That's very funny. <laughs> That's very funny. It's not a bad joke. I don't joke. think I ever even put it on an album. That's a good joke. Thank you. Because it's a joke. That's truly 14 years old. But it's a joke. Yeah. We know it's a joke. I think too, right? It depends on who it's coming from. 
I talk, I've just talked about this with somebody, the, the idea when somebody's like, what if you say something and you get in trouble for it? And I think, well, two ways to look at it. One, you've either built up a career where you um, say that stuff all the time, so your audience knows. Yeah. Or two, um, it's unlike you to say something like that, and then you usually have to just like, you know, make a stance and go, hey, I didn't mean to say that. That was a mistake. Yeah. I took a shot. And then most likely people will just go, all good. It's a, yeah. It is what it is. I don't, I don't, the other side of it, I don't really believe in of like, uh, yeah. What do you say something they're going to get you? It's like, well, dude. I'm so sick of it. It's really annoying. We yeah. can't say anything. It's like, yeah, you if can. You, some of these people have made a career out of like, I resist and I say whatever. <laughs> I'm like, it's still not funny. Yeah. I mean, you have to be funny. You got to be funny. That's the Especially thing. if you have writers. You can say anything if you're it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. Sarah Silverman also says it great, which I think is if you were to get in trouble and people, and you've been around long enough and people know your heart yeah. and they know that you weren't there to that try to hurt. You didn't mean that. In a, yeah, exactly. But I also think it's just like. You keep mentioning Sarah. Who's Sarah Silverman? <laughs> <laughs> One of the great. She is, dude. Uh, Honestly, not as good as you, but I do like her. <laughs> she's a sweet, she's a sweetheart. But you can say anything. And it's also about like perspective too. I just feel like, uh, don't, one of the reasons I like, uh, whatever, it's prior, um, 1979 Long Beach special that got put on Netflix. And he has, everyone's like, can't tell rape jokes as a man. It's like, no, he has rape jokes, but he doesn't tell them from a perspective of a rapist. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out. I mean, if you're going to, I mean, if you're playing a villain role or if like you're Jesselneck or something and you have that. That's People what he does. Know who you are, and right. that's your. He does dead baby jokes yeah. all the time, and dead rape baby jokes. By the way, when I opened for him at Caroline's years ago, oh, the program said Beth Sterling, and I was like, of course, I'm so sorry. She a friend to say something, <laughs> but it, my name's Beth Sterling. The next night, Ben Sterling. <laughs> By the way, that one you got to let go because it's just them being funny. <laughs> yeah. That's someone upstairs going, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, all right. Because <laughs> I would be that guy. Uh, she said, it's Beth Stelling. And I'm like, is it really? <laughs> okay, Ben Stelling. <laughs> um, but my mom and my sisters came to New York because it was like a fun experience like that I got to work Caroline's and um, many years ago. And I just told my mom going into it, I was like, this is what he does. It's not real. They're jokes. Yeah. So go into it not thinking about a dead child, like literally in front of you. Just, no, it's a joke. Yeah, it's not real. Did so she, she enjoy it? She had fun. Yeah. Okay. And he's obviously very nice to her. And Yeah. Well, he loves moms. Her jokes. <laughs> you know him, he's been dating moms for years. That just, I'm like, dude, he'll snatch your mom right up. I don't care if she's single or not. Andrew Santoro. I got that a bunch on the road. Really? Santoro, my name was on a few billboards and uh, a big puss. I never asked him to take it down. I just, I was too young in my career of like yeah. new headlining that I was like, that'll do. I mean, I did it when I was a feature and I felt like, I'm sorry, but. No, that's. But I think it's because my mom was coming and I was like, can we get these programs right? And I was like, worried. Sure, Ben. They wouldn't, um, <laughs> I was worried they wouldn't pay me. I was always like, God, if I bug them, they probably just would be like, get out of here. You're not even drawing it. I was like my first couple of times when I headlined. I was, you know, seven yeah. people bought tickets or whatever. That's like the strange part of all of this. That's, you really have to, um, I actually understand sometimes when people get really big and they don't understand their power mm. because we started with nothing and so little. Yeah. So when you realize you don't understand like the reach you have, the influence you have and wield it semi-responsibly, in my opinion, I think you should. Yeah. Um, I understand why, because we were nothings for a really long time. Well, also you kind of, you kind of have to, um, you have to continue to earn your keep. So it's weird that like, if you get to a point when you no longer have to earn your keep, when you're so above everything and so rich or yeah. so successful that it, there is no humbling anymore. You know, I think Rock said it, that he was like, the worst thing that can happen to a comedian is too much money because then you kind of don't have anyone to tell you no. Yeah. You know, that then you literally have everyone around you going, totally, man. Yeah. yeah, whatever you want, whatever you need. What do you want? We, you know, you want a jet? You want a helicopter in? Like, yeah. someone should once in a while be like, take an Uber, dude. Yeah, or we need like a jury, right? Mm -hmm. The jury like not allowed to know what's going on. They couldn't have seen the news. Well, or we need like a jury for some really rich right. and famous comics because people I've seen even like, I know everyone's kind of started, not everyone, but like, I feel like you're in a really good place because you're about to tour. I feel yeah. like I'm, because I got the hour out, Girl Daddy on HBO Max. Go I see it right now. Stop I, the podcast, watch it, come back. <laughs> I feel like I'm starting over, and that's the worst feeling, well, is building again. It feels awful. I hate it. But I'm good bombing. feeling, right? I hate it. Really, Beth? Yeah. But sometimes when I am seeing bigger comics, it's like they need a jury who's never seen Correct. them before. Because the shit that they are saying, 
is like I know like again they could be working it out but sometimes I'm just like that is because people know your cadence and how you talk and they like you and they know you. Do you want me Which, to you want me to say his name? Pros and cons. You want me to say the guy you're talking about's name? On three. <laughs> One, two, three. Andy Dick. Oh my God, that was it. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was searching for a good name and then I thought I'll still end up saying a name that I regret saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, Immediately. I'm better than that. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna say a name that of someone that I'm like up here with and be like, yeah. wow, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Bleeped it out. Yeah. No. But I just mean, but but that is a pro and a con. I remember like my uh, Hannibal was um, out of Chicago and we all looked up to him and he was like got Craig Ferguson first. Yeah. And, um, we just like were cheering him on for you know, years before. And then I remember one of my earliest years out here in LA, and by the way, it was well-deserved, but we were at Meltdown, which was one of the most fun shows in the back of a comic book oh, shop yeah? out here. Oh yeah, rest and in he, peace. Oh, I think his, he just said one sentence and he was like, I rented a car. And just people started exploding with laughter. And it was magical. I wasn't angry. I wasn't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was just like, he's like, I rented a car. However he says it. He's like, I rented a car. Yeah, and everyone's like, ah! But I that guess maybe you would broken. be angry if you were bitter or something. But, like, I loved seeing that. Yeah. Because people were, like, enjoying his essence and who he is. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But then, again, pros and cons to that. Yeah. Because you think lose your edge and you need what I'm saying. A well, jury. You, you also, there is somebody that I'm thinking about that, that that started to become more of a prophet on stage and more like, and that's okay. But he's never going to get accused of giving a TED Talk. Where someone right. who's unknown in <laughs> saying the same shit would. 100%. What is this, a TED Talk? It's like, oh, let's have him say it then. <laughs> for four hours. <laughs> Good God. I would never understood that when comics did four-hour sets, I was, I was like, you holding them hostage? Horrible. These poor people? I'm, I'm the, there's two, two types of comics, I think. It's the ones who show up to Dangerfield 3s or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's six people. I'm sorry, let me rephrase. There's two people. Two. And they're like, should we do the show? And I'm like, nah, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. And there's comics who are like, let's do it. <laughs> and I'm like, seek treatment. Don't you guys have anything to do? <laughs> Isn't there somewhere to go? Oh, my God. No, they're like, this is home. This is my place. Yeah. yeah. And no, I, I think, um, and I'm not being mean. I just think that, like, you kind of need... You know, we all need to continue hum to be humble or get humbled as we go. And I, I feel think like I am right now, just rebuilding. Yeah, Sorry, but that's nice. No, you're no, yeah. you're right. It is like you need that. And if you don't have that at all, um, dangerous. Because then I think you're going to get into a place when, um, no one will tell you that the the stuff that you're saying is not funny. I know, but people will laugh. Isn't that interesting? Well, that's why. Did you ever read Steve Martin's book or no? I did. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, and when he talked about, it, he was like, people stopped coming for my material, but and just came for me. He's like, I got tired of that. I didn't like it that people were like, you know, King Tut. Yeah. And he was like, well, I give other stuff. I'm doing other stuff now. Grow with me. And they didn't like it. Mm -mm. Or they didn't want it, so yeah. to speak. And then he just decided, yeah, I got to go. I think it's smart. If, that was smart, though. Well, I mean, he's he inevitably took a, a better turn. It was like yeah. stand-up where he's like, well, I'll just like write and direct films and be that for the rest of my life. And then and I can make books. funny in those and books and music. Yeah, and He's doing whatever he wants. I know. I'm such a dumb singular. Like stand-up, if it wasn't for stand-up. You're not singular. You're great on your acting shows. Nah, but I mean, you know, it's fine. I just left Wills, my friend from high school, and he was like, oh, I know him. He's great on Dave. Well, that's nice, but it's not true. I just think <laughs> it's one of those things where I just. I cracked this over if, right. Do it. If it wasn't for comedy, like, what would you be doing? Where's best selling right now? I've thought about it, of course, because I had, like, I had that lane to yeah. go in. I could have gotten married and If you had got married, kids, had a kid in Ohio. I would be doing funny marketing in Cincinnati. And you'd be so good. Oh, my God. By the way, you're marketing executive, <laughs> best selling. And everybody in town in Cincinnati would be like, have you read some of Stelling's copy? <laughs> right? And then Mark is like, I'm reading it. This stuff is gold. <laughs> I can't believe we're getting her for the price that we're getting her for. You know what I mean? They're underpaying you like crazy, but you're stoked because the dog is happy. The two kids are happy. And I have a husband that loves me. And he's blind, but he's a really good guy. <laughs> he lost his vision. He lost his vision, but he's a sweet guy in that mill accident. He's, and he works in the mill, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> what would you be doing? Oh my God, dude, honestly. And anytime I tell, anytime I talk about this, I always feel like I might be being diminutive, but I'm not. Oh, I understand what you mean. Because like if doing... you say like, oh, I do this job, it doesn't mean that it's the less than, it just means it's not, like we have a- No, it means it's all I'm capable extraordinary of. Extraordinary job. It means I'm not good at enough stuff to go, I could just do that. No, I would probably be doing labor. Yeah. Because I know I can physically or, do labor. Yeah. yeah, I'd be doing construction. Which is hard, of course. Yeah, but and I mean, well paid I, but I don't need to use my brain that I don't have. So it's like- that's good. As as a guy who doesn't need to use their brain, 
when they do stand up, as you know, my stand up's real trash. It is not garbage. Stop. And, and because it's so bad, you I, kill. I'd be killing You're on the construction dumb. site, by the way, big yeah. time. I would, di- I'd be digging a hole, you know, and I'd be, and I go, I bet this one could go all the way to China, and they wouldn't <laughs> fuck, they lose it, the whole site. Oh my god, what if he gets to China in that hole? They would make you do the Monday night. Uh, what was it called? Amateur night at the comedy club? Oh, You'd yeah. somehow still become Me and my comic. construction buddies would go. Yeah, but no, and I would do it once, and they'd be like, you should keep going. I'm like, come on, dude, I got the kids. What are you talking about? And this thick Chicago <laughs> accent. Nah, you know, Marcy's pregnant again, dude. <laughs> Have her, you ever this, heard of a her, guy? We're nine, we're nine She's kids. wife. I can't understand that part. Nine? Nine. No, yeah, that's... Mm, I have a... I, you'd think it's, like, generational or changing with time, but I, I have a friend who I... I think it's maybe going on six or seven. Are they Mormons? No. Because Mormons are big into that still. But I, yeah, it's like you don't want to judge, but it's also like. You do want to judge. Damn. What are you doing? Some people aren't even having kids because the doom and gloom of climate change in our world. Because we're going to die. <laughs> Pretty soon. <laughs> Cross your fingers. <laughs> it's coming. I think, I think people that have too many kids, this is a rude opinion, and I'm sorry if some of the fans, but. I think if you have too many kids, right, more than five is too many fucking kids, I think you're filling a void. You're filling this weird gap. You think this is going to help because there's yeah. no reason. Or like, say, I say, think about, some, like, well, this is different because it's a pet, but I think, yeah, you're right. I think there's something there. Yeah, what are you missing that you need so many fucking, look, making a, a family is important to people and I understand it and, 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 mm-hmm. and it's great. But having too many children seems um, irresponsible for some reason yeah like, especially now it's like my dad have it being obsessed with his dog his wiener dog it's like oh yeah it won't talk back to you and <laughs> say something about your behavior <laughs> and it will let you lick its lips and take it in the shower with you your dad takes the dog in the shower one time i facetimed him which is rare and his wife handed him the phone while he's in the shower and he's standing there with the dog under his arm why? he's like hey. why what's his excuse <laughs> or his reasoning, I should say. He just loves the dog, like. I know, but you don't need to do that. No. But does he wash it in there, or is that just yeah, to hang out? Yeah, he washes it in there. Yeah. And he does this all the time. And he like wipes its butt and brushes its teeth. And yeah. He missed some time with us. <laughs> <laughs> dad, dad, there was a little bit of a gap when you could have been a dad. <laughs> You're a dog dad now. No, you're a dog daddy. I guess that's okay. Right. He's found some stuff. But your mother is happy and healthy and uh, yeah. who podcasts with you and who's. Yes. Is she funnier than you? She, I would say so much of her humor comes from or her. I, for years I used the word aloof wrong, actually. Because I think it's, it's her like obliviousness and naivete. Sort of like, oh, you know. That's, that's, alo- that's so, aloof though. Yeah, but you know what? If you look up the word aloof, I feel like it's like there's a. M- a meanness to it. There's a negative connotation? Yeah. Aloof probably means stupid. Yeah, that's what you... There's probably... Will you look it up? Yeah, there's probably aloof... When you you were saying, what's your old jokes? I thought of another one, which and I chose the other one. But my sisters used to say, like, you're going to... Beth, you're going to find... Because they're they're married. Mm. And I think I used to have some clever little line into it, like, I'm behind or something like that. And they're like, Beth, you're going to find love when you least expect it. And I'm just tired of appearing aloof at all times. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but then I think I'm using it wrong. No, aloof means well. This seems odd, but this right? is Oxford says not friendly or forthcoming, cool and distant. Okay, cool and distant when you least expect it. So I guess the joke's still. Kind how of about this? Up. Uh, con- uh, conspicuously you- uninvolved and uninterested, typically through distaste. So you're. So there is a negative connotation. Mm, yes. Yuck. Yeah, and my mom is not negative. She's all positive. Yeah, so she's... Um, she's in Ohio. She's single. Um, oh, we're going to put her phone number right here, guys. Mm-hmm, if you can right look right me. down below, mm-hmm. that's Beth's mom's phone number. My dad gave his cell phone on my Instagram page the other day. Why would he do that? Don't He's, they pull it down? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because they. because somebody tweeted... I remember they... Oh, Twitter does. If you put a phone number uh, up there, they immediately pull it down. Interesting. Well, because it could... You oh, could be, doxing happens on Twitter quite a bit. 100%. Better. So you're yeah. like, oh, you can't just throw people's phone numbers up. That's crazy. No. But dad put it up there. Did he get, a, did he get some DMs oh, yeah. or something? He's had people calling him. He loves it. Is he getting some side side D? <laughs> Daddy getting some side D? <laughs> he's just people coming out to see him while he's doing his characters on the street because he's a sign spinner in Orlando. Is he really? He went out. He's been just promoting my special. What's the cross streets that he's at? Wakaiva and 434. Wakaiva and 434. If you're in Orlando, he, yeah. get over there and say he best He called yesterday like super guilty. Because he was like, I didn't go out. I said I was going to go out. I don't know. Tomorrow's the last day for Emmy nomination to run voting. And-, and why didn't he go out? He didn't give me a good excuse. Well, I'm a little pissed off at that. <laughs> By the way, didn't give me a good excuse. 
Heard that before, Dad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you want me to just sit on these steps all month, or when are you going to show up, Pops? But that's the thing about my mom. Like, she doesn't love seeing the videos of him on my Instagram. She you know? hates him? She doesn't hate him. She doesn't. It wasn't great, yeah. Doesn't like him at all. I would say doesn't like him at all, yeah. Well, there's two kinds of divorces, as far as I'm concerned, from my personal experience and from my friends. You either... Hate's a strong word, I understand. yeah. But you either have a strong dislike for the human being, let's just say that, where you're yeah. like, I don't care if they if they die because it doesn't matter to me anymore. <laughs> Which, to be fair, if the guy outside dies across the way, you know, for, I, I don't know him. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't care, but I don't care. I'm like, I how know, could you, how could you care? Yeah. Right, so the same way. So there's either that divorce where you don't really care about them anymore, where you're like, I hope they just live and life is theirs mm-hmm. now. Or, or you are, um, some people say it's healthy. I don't, I'm so confused. Oh, or yeah. you're kind of still friends. Yeah, that would be a tough one. I, tr- I even tried to end, I guess it was maybe my last relationship before this. I did try to end it as friends. and mm. It's hard. Yeah, I think that he just wasn't able to. I mean, I did the breaking up. I can understand pain and not wanting to talk it take, to that, me. T- or, time will maybe wrap that. I think. My, my good buddy, who I just was with um, in, in Jersey, his parents got divorced and they're friends again. And it I just think took time some time. Too, right? Well, they also have kids together, and they're like, there was no vitriol hate. It was just like, which is good because that's the scariest part to me about marriage is, quite frankly, the inevitable turn to vitriol. Uh, it's basically like you're building a case against you know every single thing about them. Yeah. And then you can, if you're and then you do go to a mad court. or evil or whatever you are or your feelings change, you can truly use it against them. Yeah, you go to a court and you go, Your Honor. It's like if you're like, Hey, I've been thinking about taking my life, and I was there for you. We're married. We have kids. Mm. And then it's time for the divorce, and I'm like, I don't think he can have the kids because he wants to kill himself. And you're like, I said that that's one time. Horrible of you to say. Like the things that people, I've just seen it. So yeah. that, I mean, that's not a specific example, to be honest, but I just thinking of an awful thing for someone to do to somebody else. And it's like, yeah. you share that with me. I care about you. You're fine. You figured it out. But in a court of law, I'm going to use it against you so you can't see your kids. <laughs> like that person who I'm speaking of in a different example mm. is dead to me forever until they like show marked change or apologize to me and my family. But even still, they won't. Yeah, I'm just like, you, you're. That shows who you are. Yeah. You you're, can't do that to somebody. That's crazy. That's angles, man. People have, but, but people do that all I the time. But that's why I think one reason I don't want to get married is just the inevitable, I know that sounds so dark, but it's just like, I don't want to deal with that. I think just have a relationship as long as you can and love sure. each other. Marriage should be like a, athletic contracts. I feel like you should be like a five year and then you re-sign again at five. I think that's smart. Yeah, seriously. I think it should be like yeah. one of those things where you're like. it's The hardest part is letting go, is it not? I mean, right. I, I have trouble letting go of people I know I don't want to date anymore. Right. Because I care for them. and Well, because you're still a human. The idea that because you aren't, like, you know, like when friends get divorced. I have a lot of friends that are, get divorced and whatever and, and get married. And you're like, when they do get divorced, I always go. Well, there's this assumption that like the it all fell apart. And you're like, sometimes people just don't aren't working. Yeah. And that's just okay, right? That's a thing that happens. Or in other cases, it is toxic as shit and right. people need to stop. But either way, there's always, for some reason, there's always an assumption that you're like, ooh, what kind of crazy shit happened? Yeah. And like sometimes. Sometimes it just fizzled. Stops. Yeah. It's so hard, I think, to let go. My sister, my middle sister loves to get married. She How many times? Stop. Three. Once girl, in the quarantine, and I was like, girl. where's the fire? Three times? I, In some ways, it's like, right, it's admir- admirable, right? Because you think it She's is in the difficult military. to be. <laughs> no? No. She's not an admirable? No. Oh. <laughs> it's admirable because you're like, <laughs> it's hard to be vulnerable like that. Yes. And trust again and put yourself out there and believe in someone again. Yeah, that's true. But. Not for her. <laughs> She's pretty good. <laughs> She's good at it. Well, how many kids? Four. Two, two? Two one one. Two one one. Everybody loves a two one one. Two, Spread one, it one, out. One, two, one, one, one. one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just sort of like yeah. So she has a couple of different varieties of kids, and it's it to me truly no judgment. I love my sister no matter what. We had the type of relationship where I would say like, oh, um, my boyfriend did this, some bad and disrespectful, <laughs> and I'd be like, and I hated, and I should leave him. She's like, yeah, you should. And then the next call, I'm like, we're back together. She's like, yeah. Yeah, like lo- I will him. never judge you because I'm just here for you to listen, and I'm going to tell you what I think, which is definitely leave him. Right. But you should never be scared to tell me that you went back. Sure. I well, know that cause... sounds demented, but no. What do you mean you're human? You shouldn't lose humans or relationships because they're sick of your shit. Like, 
you got to figure it out for yourself. I mean, dude, do you not? I mean, I have this with your own family, like your parents, where you're yeah. like, I still love them. But there's days when you're like, Come here, Sean, you're the most annoying people I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't like you as people. <laughs> it's blood and I can't stand you. It's weird <laughs> that you feel that way sometimes. And then it washes away when you realize, dude, I listened to a car. I was driving my parents back from, we drove up to um, Carmel and Pebble and all that stuff. And uh, I was listening to like this cheesy, stupid, like it's a, te- dude, it's a terrible song. It's like a song, a singer songwriter song from like a coffee shop where I'd walk in the coffee shop because I needed coffee and I'd leave because I'd be like, I hate that shit. <laughs> but it came on and I almost started crying because this I was is like, right, I'm torn. I'm all out, out of faith. faith. This, this is how I feel. That's it. That was it. No, the song was, I don't remember. But what it was like, whatever. And then <laughs> they were in the car and I almost started crying because I was like, something about the moment of when you're annoyed with your family or whatever. But then yeah. you realize that you're like, well, I got them. Like, I have a family, and that's a cool thing. Sometimes I, in the past, what's worked for me is I will just think of something extremely dark. Like, my mom will be dead one day, and my life will be ruined. No, she won't. And <laughs> I say that to my mom all the time. I, do you know that? She I'm goes, like, well, I hope she I goes well, we'll die. And I'm like, you're never going to die. <laughs> I was like, you're never going to fucking die. Stop. Don't ever say I, that ever I've again. I've heard people who lose their parents say there's a before and after. Like, you'll never be the same. But look at me in the face. They're never going to die. <laughs> okay. okay. My mom's right. never going to die. It's never going to happen. <laughs> Not as far as I'm concerned. I know it's gross to think, but I'm like, this is gross and selfish and weird. But, like, I'm also like, I'd want to die first so I don't have to know that she's di- that she dies. Because I'm yes. like, I don't ever want to see her die. I've said that just, before. Just let me die first so I don't have to know she dies. And I'm like, Beth, no. Well, because they've lived lives and they already they always say that thing where they're like, we, we already did it. We're yeah. done. I wonder sometimes what's next for my mom because she is like she's been single since I was eighteen and wait seriously she's beautiful and, twenty years and I think I'm not thirty I'm a little younger than that how old are you thirty six okay Beth eighteen years I mean fuck off dude it's round up round up I'm thirty seven I'll be thirty eight okay don't 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 are you scared of forty no your career's great you look great you feel great your friendship circle's right great. Here. Your hair is great. What do you need? Be 40. Say, Be- I'm best selling and I'm so 40. Hot. I'm best selling and I'm not 40 yet, but someday <laughs> I will be and I'm not scared of it. Why is 40 a thing with women? I don't think it is. It is. Okay, but also I date younger. Yeah. And sometimes that feels, I got so hot I was looking for a fan. Yeah, there is no fan. Are you really that hot? I don't know. Things got hot for me. What happened? Did I talk about something? <laughs> I think that- the lights are brighter. Over there? <laughs> No, they just got brighter. They got brighter? Yeah. We did. How's my hair now? Stevie, did you turn off the lights? There's, <laughs> Steve, nobody, there's nobody here. here. Nobody here. <laughs> Your hair looks good. No, listen, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's back it up. I think I'm hot. You I do think. have thick hair, man. You got great, okay. great hair. Um, <laughs> no, but your mom's not going to okay, die. Now. It's never going to happen. You pulling out all your hair? That's good. <laughs> to the side is good. Beth... Okay. Hey, let's fix your. You're gonna. Beth is gonna fix her hair for one second. Shake it out. Pull it back. Are you naturally curly? Yeah, but I have too much product in it right now. Yeah, too I'm much really, Prada in it. Yeah, product. Damn, you're fancy, Prada. Okay. You look great. Just relax. Over. Yeah, over. Let's see it. No, other way. You look like you're. You look like high school. That's like a high school. Okay, it's high so school special hairdo. to not be able to see what I look like. You're fine. Okay. okay. That looks good. Okay. Now put it on. This is a headphone dilemma. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Don't do anything else. All right, well, that's the show. I got a hot flash. Yeah, why did you get a hot flash? I don't know. I'm not even 40 yet. Are you pregnant? I hope not. Wait, what if you are? I mean, we've been trying, but I'm on birth control. So how are you trying? (laughs) It's an old joke of mine. My boyfriend and I have been trying and trying and trying, but I'm on birth control. It's an old (laughs) joke. Um, But you're an anal queen. You've said that to me multiple (laughs) times. There's no... Shit falls out of my Yeah, head. man. Come on. Back door only, baby. <laughs> we don't use the front over here. What are you doing, man? Get back there. Uh, no, I am on birth control. I should be good. Do you do the do you do the um the one that goes in and the, the like the machine? I the... did until I found out that I have a bicornet uterus. Explain. <laughs> what could that be? Okay, so Okay, I'm that's so yeah, hot. Yeah, you did get hot. I don't know why. I don't know either. That's all right. Okay. I think you're having too much fun. Okay, that might be it. Yeah, and the booze might be making okay. you a little hot. There's no way. I don't know. It would make me that hot. I mean, you don't look that. Okay, I, okay. I don't think the viewers okay. can know that you're hot. I'm ready to okay. answer the question. Okay. I feel cooler. It could be the dress. 
So you need to get some air in. Can I tell you, can I be honest with you? I look like a third grade teacher. No, but it is the dress. Okay. It's probably a lot of it's, fabric. It's holding it in. Yeah, we should have worn something more comfortable. I'm wearing this dress because I thought it was going to be hot. And boxer shorts. Boxers. Women's what? Boxers. That's what it is. Don't wear boxers. Women's boxers. I know, but that two fabrics on top of each other is what's okay. going on. I'm not wearing any underwear. I never do. Really? Stop wearing them a long time ago. Pre-pandemic, I never wear undies anymore. Have you anymore. noticed a marked change in your balls? Dangling longer? They are a little bit longer. Just curious. But also, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, what we're do I need fun. short as balls as not for? In the toilet. They are. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had to pull them back. It's nuts when they get sucked in. I gotta yank them back as hard as I can. <laughs> No, but honestly, how, why do you need short okay. balls anyway? Oh, you don't. But answer my question. Okay, bicornet eater. So, bicornet so, so, bi, Wait, say it the slowly. Bicornet. Bicornuit. Bicornuit. Bicornuit uterus. Thank you. Yes. I have Googled it. Essentially, it means I have a heart shaped uterus, which is how so cute. Um, and I have an arrow shaped penis. It's perfect. Ooh. Right through. Um, maybe we should. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait a minute. It's a perfect shaped heart uterus. Yeah, now. So, but before that, um, sorry, I'm thinking in joke terms, my, maybe nine years ago, I was told I had a tilted uterus. Oh, it leaning. Mm, like, it's on that and lean. And the joke I told on Conan was like, oh, so you're telling me even my uterus is like, mm. okay. <laughs> but then I had the AUD forever, got it removed. I thought I'm going to, because I was trying to clear up my acne and it worked for a long time. And then I started breaking out. Who cares? <sighs> Yank it out. And I said, you know what? That didn't help. I just get another AUD. I'll just get another IUD. I'll grab me another IUD. Shove another one up here. Go ahead. And the woman, my new guy now out here, uh, said, that's not going to work for you. And I'm like, well, it worked for seven years. She's like, no, um, because they did an ultrasound. You have a bicornate uterus. And I was like, what do you mean? She's saying, if the IUD moved to this chamber or this chamber, I could have gotten pregnant in the other chamber. Whoa. So for seven years, I was just. That thing was just like. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, please, wait, no, no. please, wait, no. Wait, I'm working so hard all the time. <laughs> how, how many guys are swimming up here? This is insane. Wow. So now you can't do that. 700 shots on goal, all rejected. <laughs> 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 the best goalie of all time. So do you... So do now you, I take... Oh, a well, pill. God, yeah. Which is so crazy to do at my age. Like, to start the pill in October, I was on Yaz and I was a, became a different person. Well, why don't you... Dude, why don't you do no pill and get the thing that um, you can do it the thing in the morning the ja- the Japanese thing you take your temperature every day and it tells you your high days and your low days and all that. Ooh, do you not know this machine? No. It's incredible. I need to get that. Yeah, you should get it. It's called the Daisy. Okay. But honestly, because I currently am battling now. I, I mean, I had a really rough fall with the birth control. Mm-hmm. I was trying to clear up my face. I didn't want to get pregnant, and I was having a partner, so I was just like, excuse me, um, dealing with truly. It sucked. Did Birth control is mo- wild. Mood like, changes tr- and all that stuff. I walk by this place on Bronson Canyon, and I'm like, "That's where I scream cried to my sister." I mean, like, Ugh! like wow. it was awful. And these are things like thousands, hundreds of thousands of women are taking. Yeah, it's, people don't know it's really bad for you. Yeah, so it's then I change, and it's better. Right. I like being in touch with my emotions. I think it's messing with my, yeah, it just regulation of them. Do you think men would take a birth control if it came out and was more was available? Of course, I feel like there's that that happened, and there was a bunch of jokes going. Oh, Kara Clank had a great joke about it. She's like, "Oh, you want my husband to remember to take the pill every night? He didn't even know his pajamas were glow in the dark." Something like that. That's that's. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say it's funny, but it's not. It's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> she tells it better. No, no, it's okay. good. It was no, something like, but I she's think, like, "Oh, those glow in the dark." I think like, men oh, would, really? particularly if you told them about. I think, I think, I think, I think men. Okay, I was look. gonna say that's not funny, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I men think men use, would. Men use condoms a lot in the fear of STD. If you put fear in men, they'll do something, right? If yeah. you say, if you say, women are done using birth control because we're sick of what's going on. Yeah. I'm tired of the hormone changes, the weight gain, the da da da, whatever, whatever, blah blah blah. Emotional. And if you say we're not doing it anymore, so if you don't take the thing or put on a condom, unfortunately, it's over. we're still stuck with it. 100%. Like that's the thing that stuck sucks. Yeah. I always, again. Well, we should make a colony for you. We should make a little (laughs) island for you guys to be on. That's the thing that sucks. It's like, even if I did put my foot down, I'm still stuck with it. Men, like, yeah, I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm a joke about it. Men are garbage, but women are the can. You sure are. We're stuck. But you're the can with with your But you're the New York graded can one because shit still falls out the side, you know? You guys are garbage, but you only retain what you need to retain. We keep the big stuff. Yeah, you do. And let the little 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 stuff go. But the little stuff is nearby, so don't fucking tempt me. (laughs) What's your oldest grudge? 
Ooh. <laughs> you don't have to mention a name or anything like that. But There's you can a couple girls scenario. who were younger than me in Chicago by like, I don't even know, a year or two who started after me, basically. Lisa Traeger. <laughs> I've started darting out names I know from Chicago. <laughs> and they just were like weird, mean girls to me. I'm like, I'm older than you. They're but just, why mean? In what way? Stuff would just get back to me. Like Beth's, like, like you're. I can't wait for Beth to leave. Oh, really? To LA so we can take her place. What a backhanded compliment. But, but that means it's like, I can't wait for you to continue your success. <laughs> I can't wait for her to get that. Yeah, that's like. That's I was like, texting another comic about her. This is what got her friend up in arms. Oh, who's her? Oh, we're not mentioning right. who it is? Okay. There was a situation where a comic and I, we liked each other. We had an affinity for each other. Never kissed, but we would hang out a lot. He kind of wanted something to happen. I had a boyfriend at the time who was a civilian, and I had made a rule hard and fast that I, when I first started stand up that I wouldn't date another comic, that I wouldn't repeat a joke. And then I wouldn't take a notebook on stage. Man, you've broken all those rules a time and time Big and time, time again. <laughs> but at the time, I hadn't broken the first one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and then, you know, he kind of shot a shot. And I was like, no. Nah. And then he dated this other girl, her friend. Mm-hmm. And at a roast, one of the other comics said, I watch your stand-up like Danny fucks you. Close my eyes and wish it was Beth Stelling. Oh, man. That's so good. So mean. So good. So that's the oldest grudge. That person doesn't like me. Uh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. But nothing happened. Like, he's like, what happened? Nothing. Just a mean joke. Feelings happen. Feelings. You're right. Yeah. I mean, you can't deny that. No, feelings happen. Hurt. But, but that, still, that still exists. <laughs> so when you turn up dead, I'll know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I know where this happened. I know where this stemmed from. But it's like, how is that still... Re- I'm cordial to the person. I've seen them. Doesn't matter. And it's just like, she interrupted... Like, I was ta- I was talking to someone, and mm. I saw her at a picnic recently, or like a friend's gathering, and she just came over and interrupted and took the person from me, and I'm like, okay. Ugh, weird. I'm sorry, but you're a grown woman, and I hope you find happiness. We're getting too old for that That's crazy. Stuff. Like, like, it's not like so wild and so cruel. It's just like, babe. Grow up. It's okay. You gotta grow up. I'm gonna see her again. A lot. <laughs> She's my friend. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, weird. the other girl that she cut off. I'm just sort of like, okay, bye. Yeah, but that, you know, I don't, with comics, I mean, well, and this is. What's g- your, you have well, a friend? Well, this, I honestly don't. I mean, this, I have um, friendships that ended over the years from people that I just thought weren't good for me anymore or whatever, and they probably hate me. But it's more just because I was like, I don't really wanna fuck with you anymore. It was more like, ah. So, almost like, s- protection of yourself or just because i just didn't think like that the friendship was you know like there's there's happens there's someone that i know that um whenever he hits me up like it's pretty disingenuous and stuff and i just can tell i have i under i can so understand what you're saying i've and it was never it wasn't a moment in time that like i held a grudge from specifically but it was always but it was a few moments that i've kind of collected over the years that i've gone oh you're not my fucking friend. Yeah, you're not I, my friend I, I get at that. All. You're not even like a. You're not even an acquaintance. Uh, you just know that like I'm available sometimes for you because we have history. That's kind of how I feel about certain people, and I go, "This is bogus." On the beginning ends of that, I've had people sort of like, "Let's be friends" or whatever, and it's sort of like I'm picking up vibes that this might not be like a symbiotic relationship, <laughs> and I'm going to keep you at an arm's length. I'm not rude to you. Right. That's I'm okay. Just gonna... You're just being cordial at some point, yeah. right? I mean. Our although, world. although, although Nikki Glazer had said to me, which was interesting because I've never taken advice from someone like her. I mean, <laughs> you know, she's, you know, what am I going to, anyway, no, but Nikki, I know I love Nikki, but she said to me, she goes, she's trying to live more truthful. And she started now to, she says, if there's people in comedy that she doesn't get along with or whatever, and they see each other, she just tries now to not fake the thing. And I said, well, you've been doing that for years. And she said, yeah, I have. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm trying to not fake the thing. Hard to break. Yeah, to go, you know. Look, I know there's people. I, I, I certainly didn't stand, didn't stand on that because like, there's probably people I'll see tonight or tomorrow that of uh, comics or people that I don't like that I just go, hey, yeah. I don't care. I, I don't care enough to, pr- to be honest about the fact that I'm not a fan. I know it's hard. That, t- that is really hard to do, and it's sort of, I guess, you just weigh. The lies are okay. You weigh it you, because you I'm go, okay with being okay, like. Or what? Does it result in the conversation? Of, oh, what did I do? That I don't want to have. Is it, if, if the person's like, oh, you just changed. What did I do? And it's like, 
oh, you've just been yourself for the last 10 years, and I was faking it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. Well, what's the alternative is to is is that you, well, then you, you, you tell them everything you need to tell them, and it still doesn't help, so you're in the same weird place. So it's just, I, you know, fuck but it, let it go. But think about it, too. There's people who do stuff on stage that you're just, either like you're saying, you're not a fan of, or yeah. is like, detrimental or problematic or whatever it is or just like oh that's not helping or annoying yeah um and that happens i don't know well in my opinion i'm not going to go up to them and be like I don't, i'm not cool with you anymore i'm just going to just con- continue to exist by the way that's what my dad said one time he was like the idea that you're going to like everyone you work with is insane yeah because my dad was like the amount of people that he worked with that he hated he was like, what do you mean? You think you're going to work with fucking all your, we're all coworkers. You think all your coworkers are going to get along with? Walk in any office. You're right. Are they all buds? You know, is everyone chumming? No, of course not. There's a few people in the office that you're like, fuck Steve. He's annoying. He, he, he yeah. ruins the thing. Yeah. You don't happens. have to get, I mean, you know. Uh, but you just was... have to show up to work and work and go, hey, Steve, and then keep moving along. Yeah. Be cordial, but not be, be, yeah. I feel cordial, like that's but better. Not... No, what am I trying to say? My mom has a great saying, and I can't remember it. Do her do an impression of your mom again. Um, she's like, oh, fuck. What, what does she say? Something but just do, like cordial, I love when you do your mom. Like, just do your mom. Just be cordial, but not friendly. Friendly, but not something like that. Friendly, but not friend. She's so soft, your mom. <laughs> Why is she lovely. so soft? Why does she I have that? Know. She's airy? Yeah, she, t- I know it's my mom, so I'm going to be biased, but I just have always felt like she's like an angel. Yeah, she's like, soft. Yeah. I would go up to, after she would take a little nap after work, she was a teacher, a music teacher, and I would come home from school, run upstairs to her bed, and lay, you know, probably in her arm or something, and look up at her nostrils, and they're heart-shaped. Shut and I was just like, like make your sure uterus. that her chest was, yeah, run from the fam. <laughs> a lot of heart there. Yeah. And you would make sure her chest was... Still moving. Oh, mom, don't die. <laughs> yeah, basically. The whole time, just don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. But also, well... You can say I'm wrong, and this is annoying to ask you this, but you feel like a kid, you feel like when you were a kid, you would um, kiss your mom on the lips. <laughs> yeah. You did. But it was always very tight lips. But I know, but you did, didn't you? I did. I know there's two kinds of kids. But there wasn't, and now we don't, and now it would be weird, actually. No, 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 I'm just saying. Yeah. When some kids kiss mom on the mouth, yo, really that's Really tight. Yeah, no. <laughs> Although my, fr- I have no. again. I'm thinking of old jokes because you made me. Um, I do have a joke. My mom was my first kiss. I mean, I think I, I watched <laughs> Far and Away, and I was like, mm, I'm gonna try that. And my mom went to tug me in, and she goes to give me a kiss, and then I held her head up against my head for a while, and she's like, Yeah, what was that? And then I was like, It's like pretending to sleep. sleep. Same sleeping. thing I did when I shaved my legs way too early. She's like, Shave your legs, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? She just leaves? I was in the top bunk, so she had to stand oh. on my desk chair. To Path. Say good night. Did you Path. ever use Nair? My sister used to use Nair. I wish. I used a freaking daisy razor at the bottom of my ankle, mm. no water or shaving cream. Why? Torture? I don't know. What are you, know, a masochist? I'm a dum-dum. Yeah. Just... My sisters came in and were like, unlock the door. They Wait, were you had sisters me. and nobody helped? It, I was too young. I was like, I saw them doing it, and I was in second grade, and I locked myself in there. Mm. And I then when you do something bad like that as a kid, you're like, oh, no, I'm in trouble, instead of, like, seeking help. <laughs> <laughs> Free bleeding out. You're bleeding in the tub? Oh, my God. And, and then I like, just had, like, a anybody. hairy leg with, a st- like, just this much of <laughs> hair gone. chunk missing. <laughs> <laughs> and skin. Skin and, like, this much of hair. <laughs> I love that image. My sister used to use Dare. Which I'd look it up. She'd probably. It's funny that I, she's still my little sister. I mean, she's, she's 30. Yeah. But I'm, like, saying this thinking she'll probably hear this and then go, and, and then be like, my instinct is to her. She would be like, Andrew, why would you say that? But I'm like, no, she's 30 she now. She doesn't care. I know, but I still yeah, feel yeah. that vibe because she used to be get mad at me for saying, but she used to use Nair and the smell of Nair. If know. anybody knows Nair, it's like hot, burn, it's burning hair. Yes. And it's also like- um, Sulfury or something. So, yes, it's like eggy factory. Yeah. It's like egg fart factory. And it also mixed with like soap from the tub and shit. But I remember going into our bathroom, we shared a bathroom and I was always like, I could tell when she started doing it, but she was so embarrassed because I'm eight, yeah. I'm eight years we older. We didn't help each other. Well, I'm eight years older, so mm-hmm. it's also the gap was hard. So it wasn't like we were close in age. So I was older, and I'd go in, and she hated that I knew that she was doing anything too girly. And then I would smell it, and like an asshole brother, I'd be like, oh, you're putting that goop on your legs, you yeah. know, like a jerk. She's like, shut up! You know, she hated that I, but I, but the thing that stood out the most was the stink was so strong that like, 
you know how like if you had too much of a booze and you smell now you that smell or that kind of chemically thing it's like makes me nauseous i bet because I would shower I would say with it. Most women don't use that. Like your wife probably just shaves or waxes or gets laser. Hair? No, never shaves or never hair. Never nothing. She she, she keeps it all there. Hair? No. Always hair, all the hair. Are you being real? I want all the hair. <laughs> Who's a real feminist, Beth? <laughs> Razors yeah. made by men, pigs. <laughs> I say more hair the better. No, laser is she does the, laser. Uh, yeah. I need to get my legs lasered because I'm just sick of it. I'm well, tired. let's, uh, right here, is a, there's a link below called laserbeth.com. <laughs> Go to laserbeth.com and please donate Do I get a to, kickback? to oh, Laser okay. Beth. Let's start a GoFundMe. It's for a GoFundMe. Oh, thank Beth, you so much. Laserbeth.com. By the way, Laser Beth is a great name <laughs> for a special. <laughs> laser Beth. Crystal Beth. Is that your stripper name? Beth Metal. What's your stripper name? Is it like Pootie Monterey? My first your, animal in my street? In your street? street. Yeah, Pootie Monterey. <laughs> Pretty That's strong. hot. <laughs> Pootie Monterey? Yeah. Your your dog's name was Pootie? Cat. And its full name was Poodles, but we called it Pootie. So you named a cat a dog breed. Poodles. And then it turned into a Pootie. fart nickname. I get it. <laughs> it's all making sense. <laughs> Pootie. I never had a pet as a kid because my parents were evil. No. But also you're a city kid. Yeah, but I have one now. It's called Cubby. That's her name. Oh, wait. Have I ever seen a pet? My little puppuccino. Oh. Well, she's got her eyes covered because she's in the she's in the witness protection program. <laughs> can't I can't have you see her, her eyes. Understand. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, cover. That's the cubster. So mine would be um, mine would be. Um, wait, your it's well, cubby. Wait, what? It's your street name? Is that I what thought, it is? I think it's your first pet and your street name, childhood street name. Okay, so it'd be Cubby Dearborn. Cu- you were on Dearborn. Cubby Pretty Dearborn. Cool. Was it cool to be on Dearborn? It's a great street. Yeah, it was actually. You know? It was behind the Viagra Triangle. People that don't know in Chicago, that's oh, an area yes. where old I men. I almost got a job at, was it? Gibson's? It might have been Frog Gibson's. Frog Bar, Hugo's is over there. What else Hugo's? is over there? Wait, wait. Big Bull used to be over there. Luminati's. Yeah. Oh, I got sick from Big Bull one time and barfed at the top of the Hancock Tower on my mom's 60th birthday. Found it. Wow. What a I cool moment. I rode it right up to the top like this. My, I was, as it was shooting up the elevator, I was sinking into the corner and my sister <laughs> Hannah ran with me to the bathroom and held my hair back while I big bold everything into the toilet. Big bold does seem like a place that puts too much together that you would wow. get sick. So Hancock Tower, you puke? Top of it. Wow. What's it called now? Didn't they change oh, it? Oh, you're right, Willis. Let's no, not no, even, that, let's no, not no, even no, Willis, that. Willis oh, is Sears. Sears. It better be Hancock still. But you know what they just changed? They just changed Lakeshore Drive. No. I swear to God. To what? Swear to God. Um, uh... The guy who, um... Barack Obama. Barack Obama. I keep forgetting <laughs> his name, that man. The guy who... No, they know. changed it to the guy, the guy who, um, one of the guys who founded Chicago. Truth, Truthfully, he's all over the city. De- Daily. De- no, no, no. Mm. <laughs> Mayor Daly. No, just, this is like one of the original guys that, that, that oh. settled Chicago. Why um, would they change now? Unless... Lakeshore Drive... Lakeshore Drive didn't hurt anybody. Changed to... It did, though. Oh, Hey, so Lakeshore Theater was one of my first formative experiences opening for someone. Look at that. Ooh. Hold on. I'm gonna finish that story in one second. It's renamed to honor the black settler. Chicago, by the way, people don't know, was, uh, was settled by a black man. Was You see it all over. Oh, I love this, uh, actually. Jean Baptiste Point Du Sable. You know Du Sable. You see Du Sable all over. I love this. They have the library. Du Sable. I'm down for this. Do you not know Du Sable, by the way? It's all over Chicago. You've seen this name. Look at how I say it wrong. Um, du Sable. Wow. There's a street. Have He's, they have a that. they have a library. Du Sable. They have a school. They have a um. Anyway, oh. Du Sable is all over Chicago, but I didn't know what it was. I'm happy to see this. This is a black settler. Here you go. Chicago City Council voted Friday to change the name of Lakeshore Drive to the name of a black man recognized as the key settler of the city. He was the original key settler. So they say there were others, but he was from Haiti. Haitians, shout out! Whoop whoop! And uh, he had a successful trading post in the 1700s. He died in 1818. Um, he died at a young 90 years old. Uh, Whoa, he died. Oh, that's a long time to live. He was incorporated in a town, and it was a cor- Chicago was incorporated in 1833, four years later. Anyway, uh, I'm rambling, I'm rambling, but isn't that isn't that wild that they that DeSable getting yes. his own street? DeSable out here getting his own street that's in this cool. bitch. I have a newer bit about that because M- Dayton is the birthplace of aviation. And is it really? Well, Wilbur and Orville Wright have a house there, like their house is close to. But they were North Carolina kids. They built the airplane in Dayton, right? Then they took it to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, to fly it for oh. beach, wind, the conditions. Mm. That's why North Carolina's license plates say first in flight and ours say birthplace of aviation. It's a real war. You say that on your plates. Our say birthplace of aviation. I didn't know that. What, But they also had a bicycle shop. And anyway, my point being, uh, I have a new joke that I've been trying to work out and it's fine. But it's along it. the line. It's just, say, I'm saying, 
all the firsts, like, we're, you shouldn't, we have to redo them. Were you really first if you're the only one allowed to do it? Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or by the way, who st- who'd you steal it from? That's what it should yeah. be called. Who'd you steal that from? Like, remember when you were a kid? Well, when I was a kid in, in Illinois, we'd go to the first McDonald's. The first McDonald's. You know where the real one is? Where? Here. <gasps> in San LA? Bernardino, dude. Wow. McDonald's. Ray Kroc stole it. Because we're talking it. about the one downtown. On- no, 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 no. McDonald's was out. out Not in- rock and roll McDonald's. No, no, no. Right. No, but God bless. I think that's gone. Somebody wow. told me that's gone. No, uh, the McDonald's is out in... <laughs> Illinois people are going to say, not Plainfield. Anyway, it's out. Okay. But the original one is here in San Bernardino. The McDonald's brothers are farmers from California. Weird. Ray Kroc stole it. Can you imagine? It. Stole it, this fucking guy. Can you imagine the real McDonald's brothers going in and be like, this is what it's become? They sold it for nothing, too. <sighs> Poor bastards. The McDonald's kid, I'm friends with Marcus McDonald. Do you know him? He's a comic. No. I'm kidding. Oh, my. It's insane. Heir to the McDonald's fortune. But his great-great-grandpa <laughs> gave it up. <laughs> okay, the last thing I was going to say about Lakeshore Theater, which uh, yes. is now the Laugh Factory. Correct. But one of my early, my formative comedy experiences was opening for Mike DiStefano, who's past now. Mike DiStefano. Oh, man. Yeah. But he was His so moth was great one of the best me. moths of all time. Yeah. He was so great to me. I lived three or four blocks from, <laughs> from the Lakeshore, <laughs> and I would go to Soup Bowl. What was it called? Soup Box. Soup box. Soup box. And I went there for lunch, ran into him because he was probably staying nearby the theater. And he's like, let me get your lunch. And I was like blown away. Wow. Because like, you know, that's a big deal when you don't have a ton of money. And he sat and talked with me for a little bit. And then he signed one of his books for me. It was just like a great, who was like the first formative opening that you Mine is definitely not a beautiful story about one of the greatest comics like yours. So thanks for setting me up for disaster. So uh, no, your You're story like is. Polly Shore side splitters. <laughs> he tried to fuck me. Tried. I let him. I wanted more time on stage. By the way, uh, for people that don't know, comic fans, um, Mike DiStefano was, uh, and I say DiStefano because of Chris, because of Chris. And I Chaos. know it's uh, no, yeah. no, no, but it is DiStefano. You're yeah. right, and DiStefano is uh, Chris. everyone knows Chris, Chris and, and he's Chaos. and Chris and Chaos is a Brooklyn piece of shit. <laughs> uh, but uh, Mike DiStefano was a great, a brilliant comic. comedian. If you ever get a chance, go watch his Moth, the Moth. Go watch just he was just do the Moth. So dynamic. Yeah. And just to add to it, when we shot, we filmed Crashing, um, season one. It, we were in a. Um, gas station on Long Island, I think it was. And we're talking, we're in between, I'm on set as a writer and I hear this voice. I'm like, that sounds like Mike's voice. And I turn around and it looks like Mike's freaking face. And it's his brother. Oh. He just was like, are you guys sure you're closed? Because we shut down the whole gas station and he needed gas. Wow. Did you say anything to him? Oh, of course. We have a picture. I put it on my Instagram years back. Wow. I was like, I knew your brother. He's one of the first people I opened for. And he was like, oh. That's crazy. His story, I don't want to give away the moth. Yeah. You can hear it, but his story's nuts. I'll give you, for anybody who wants to give us a hint, he died in a fist fight. In a, it was one on 50. He fought 50 <laughs> men and women. It was nuts. He beat the shit out of her. That the last person had a knife. Uh, he was very funny. Who was my first form? I didn't have, you know, I've always kind of been this... Uh, I don't want to give myself credit and say I'm an enigma in this world, but I am to a degree that I didn't have a very traditional path. So, like, I don't, I headline young, I did punked, and I got to do like D rooms, C and D rooms. So, I had, I've, I've told this before, but Billy Gardell. Billy Gardell, I opened for them, I hosted for him, was the first hosting job I ever had at um, Brea, Irvine, one of the mm-hmm. down southers. Yeah. And, uh, I was in the green room, and he came in with, like, two of the dudes, like, big, you know, Italian dudes. And um, and then, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, what's wrong with me? I see him. Oh, my God, this is so annoying. I hate it when I do that. Anyway, anyway, but they all come in. and uh, Jimmy Schubert, Jimmy Schubert, Jimmy uh-huh. Schubert. And Schubert comes in, and he's, like, you know, Schuberting around. And, and uh, I notice that I'm in the green room, and they're all chumming it up. And so I get up immediately like, fast, and I get out. And Billy grabs me by the arm. And I was like, oh, fuck, I, like, fucked this up already. Yeah. And then he's like, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. You know, it's your green. I'm going to go stand in the back. So rare. And then he was like, that behavior. he's like, what the fuck are you doing? What do you mean? This is your green room, too. And I was like, oh, so I'm going to go. Le-. I was like, still like, this is a test. <laughs> I was like, I'm not standing. Around. So he was like, no, no. I was like, no, but I was just going to go pee. I was kidding. I was going to go pee. Lying, lying, lying. Yeah. Then I go pee and I never went back in there. And then. After he did a set in between the first and second show, he came up to me and was like, why are you standing out here? And I was like, oh, I'm okay out here. 
I was like drinking a Coke in the corner. I was mm. like, I'm fine. He was like, dude, come in the room, will you? Hang. So I finally did, but it meant it meant a lot that he kind of like took the time because the yeah. other guys were kind of like, get the fuck out. Yeah, some I've been in those scenarios too yeah. when I was opening where it's just like, why are you here? Oh, I mean, it sounds so cliche and like what I had to deal with is nowhere near what some of the other women who came before me had to deal with, but truly people were saying stuff, why are you here? Oh, because you're a woman? Like, I, some of the old <laughs> Chicago guys would literally say that to me, and it's just like... Yeah, but then when you ripped harder than them, then what did they say? Well, I actually bombed. Uh, it was <laughs> it was the St. <laughs> Charles Zanies. I was opening for... Never have done it. It, it was like a Christmas party. I was kind of set up for to fail. Oh. I'm not their fault. I mean, it just was drunk people, and I was new. And I get it. I was opening for a, a really... Dobie Maxwell was so kind to me, but it was uh-huh. his buddies that showed up. And were so cruel to me. And the host was so mean to me and stole a joke of mine. Really? And did it on the on show. On the show? And then mine bombed after. Who's the host? Vince Moranto. You know who the fuck you are. It was wild. Vince Moranto? I'm t- Moranto. Is I had to work dead? with him since. And I went, ended up headlining. And I, I still couldn't be mean to him years later. Yeah, it's because you have a good soul. That's because you have a heart-shaped... It was uterus. Uterus. That's why. <laughs> but Wow. I mean, that was wild to me, what they said and did to me. Was, you're here because you're a woman, and, you know, Bert likes to headline him early. And, and not in a—he he, he didn't refer to Bert in, in like, a sexual way, mm, headlining no, him early. Just, he just meant, like, because you're a—I don't even know, novelty, I guess. Like a, But like they were just—but Dobie was not like that to me at all. He Dobie was always was cool. kind and, like, happy you're here and staying positive, and you'll get better. That's nice. Yeah, but— I try I my best. I don't bomb every show, but you either do. way. It was, I read the reviews. <laughs> Beth bombs every show. BBES. It said BBES. Kil- Beth bombs Ireland. every show in Kilkenny. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this lump of shit? But, That's what, but she... what you were doing is rare because I've I've also had plenty of comics just like be in the green room talking really loud, eating, ordering food, and I'm kind of like, I don't need total peace, but like I've clearly put off putting together what I want to talk about the last minute. So yeah, but I definitely what I do now is I have people that I take someone with me now, <clears throat> and uh, that helps. I make it very apparent that I'm like. Let's respect the rules of like I'm about to perform type of shit. Yeah. Like I like I just kind of want a little bit of like a it, oh, if I'm turn, turn a calm if I'm having a good time and it's a party and it's like family and friends, You'll know. you can all feel it. Yeah. But if I'm sitting there in a book like writing or whatever, yeah, I've definitely had people like as you're writing yourself like hey what's up and I'm sort of like I don't make me a bitch yeah because I'm about to do I have to go talk for 45 to an hour the thing I'm writing in yeah. Just you let see, me do that and you then see talk to me doing. after the show. Yeah. Also, don't talk to me after the show. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here and never come back. No. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, we got to go. And I know you have to go to your laser appointment. Um, lasers? You're doing two, right? Two laser appointments? Three. Get Beth. Back la- back. Uh, uh, laserbeth.com right here. Please promote. Please uh, sign up. Um, uh, uh, oh God, I was just going to say. Do, oh, do you have come out music? Do you have um, walk out music? Yeah. Do you prefer? What is it? Um, Pretty Ugly by Tierra Whack. Wow. Every, why, every comic does. Do I need to do this? Every I comic I know has a to, song. But all the people I open for do, and it makes it very fun. Fuck, I need to do it. I usually just be like, whatever. Yeah. The I DJ. wish I could remember Sarah's right now. It just slipped me. Sarah, it's fun. Sarah's, Sarah's uh, Silverman. S- I don't know her. <laughs> Silverman's walk-up music has got to be. She also ends on a great one that's very fun for everybody to dance to at the end. I can't believe I'm, not, I'm blank. Is it WAP? <laughs> Sarah comes out to um, My Neck, My Back, Eat My Put. What a good song, by the way. I should come out to that. She comes out to, Welcome, this is a farm out. Just fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just strolls out. You know what? Actually, you know what I came out to in Dal- Al- Addison, Dallas? I came out to... Uh, there's a country artist who I really like, and he hit me up on Instagram. He's like, dude, thanks for promoting me. But he's like country, and I don't really listen to country, but the song is hilarious. It's called Dick Down in Dallas. Oh, I know it. And he wrote a song about his girlfriend cheating on yes, him. Yes, I know it. So, 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 it so, is funny. Oh, dude. So, it's just, and I hit him up. I go, dude, this, I go, no offense. It's so uh, funny. I'm not a country fan. It's not my thing. But yeah. I was like, what a great way to get back at your, because she cheated on him with someone he knew, apparently. And so the whole song is, she's getting Dick Down in Dallas. She's getting... Like um, ass fucked in Austin, she's get, uh, butt fucked in Boston. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, his name's all these. And it sounds good. too. Oh, it sounds like, really good. I don't. I can't she's think of it, but I remember. Butt fucked in Boston. Boston. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, dick down, down, down or, or uh, whatever it is, but dick down in something else. Dick down in Dallas, butt fucked in Boston. Um, like t- uh, triple weight in Tennessee, whatever it is. Anyway, 
that's what I came out to. I got to pick a new song. You got to help me. You can text me, email me, let me know what song you want me to city? come out to. Anywhere, everywhere. Just tell me. Where, I'm going to Houston next. Boston. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Boston ever. Speaking I of which, like what's the difference? Uh, what? Well, you got to start at a certain. What's what's the difference? Dre and Eminem. What's oh, what's me and, me and you, me and you? If I would do hip hop, because I'm a hip hop head, my my fans know this. I would do old school. It would be like. And by the way, rest in peace, Gift of Gab from Black Alicious, who died, who I won a talent competition imitating his um, ABCs. What? I did when I was in high school. That's really crazy. I didn't even talk about it on the last show. But yeah, Gift of Gab died from Black Alicious, who I absolutely love. is one of the best MCs. I would probably come out to like a tribe song. That's kind of cool. No, I don't know. Oh, I'd come out to Sean Price or like Big L or just like an old school hip hop song that's hard as fuck. Yeah. Like a hard as fuck song. Because I'm not hard as fuck. But sometimes you have to like at eight seconds in because it like, it depends. Yeah, because it's a build up. Yeah, sometimes. All these bitches and all these hoes mm-hmm. here, somebody, somebody here. Gonna yeah. Fuck. So I guess that, that'll come out to that. I'm going to come out to, you ain't got to say it too much. Oh. Fucking eyes, I can tell you want to fuck. fuck. Oh, man. You ain't got to By the way, fool. we're 40. <laughs> Stop. We're 40. <laughs> we are 40. Um, Beth, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm happy that you came. How about let's do this. <clears throat> if you have dates, please tell them right now. Don't have any. Don't have any dates. Not touring. They're they're going to happen soon. Maybe. You don't really care? I don't feel like touring. You don't need to. So Fuck sorry. it. What do you care? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no dates, but please, please, please. I know we're a hot minute late because I was gone. We couldn't promote um, the oh, special yeah. for when we wanted to promote it for. But it's okay. It's called Girl Daddy. But please just go watch it right now HBO on HBO Max. HBO Max. HBO Max is HBO Go. It's the new one, right? No clue. Isn't that funny, though? Why do they keep changing it? Leave it alone. I don't know. It's HBO. If you have HBO, which is HBO Max, the online platform, which Mm -hmm. I hope you do, because if you have AT&T, it comes with AT&T, and if you don't know that, call AT&T. You you know this? No. You get it for free. I'm an AT&T customer. I get HBO for free. I don't pay for it. If you have AT&T, if you're an AT&T cell phone user, they'll give you HBO Max. You have no fucking excuse not to go watch Girl Daddy on HBO Max. And if you're not an AT&T customer who fucking cares, still get HBO and watch Girl Daddy on HBO Max. Best telling. Um, you're the best. We end the show the same way. Uh, you look into that camera, you say mm-hmm. one word or one phrase. It's going to end the episode. This is going to cement you in Whiskey Ginger history. So make it count. That camera, a one phrase? word. One word or one phrase. Because sometimes I get people that go, I don't know a word. I don't want a word. So I say, okay, say a phrase that you want to leave people with. But would you prefer a word or phrase? I'm thinking of two things. Okay, you can do both. There's no rules in this fucking wow. house. The word is evergreen. Mm. And the phrase is, in taste, there is no argument. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey.